everybody, it's Tyler here at the Minnesota Signature Event at Mall of America, checking in 7701X, formerly Twitter, love the name by the way, uh, but a lot of great stuff. Hopefully you saw the reveal video come out just a little while ago. There's a lot of cool things with this robot we're going to be diving into. Had a great match here, one of the quickest robots I've seen on the field so far in high stakes, so we can't wait to see how they do. Interesting strategy, decide not to go with the side stakes as well too, so we'll be talking more about that. Really a lot of great control over this goal, so we can't wait to learn more about that, what this robot has to bring. Coming up here on Pips and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Sam, let's talk about math strategy. I'd love to hear a bit more how you approach the high stakes game. Uh, talk about some of the you know offensive capabilities you're about, and then also some decisions maybe not to go with a couple areas too. So with our wall stakes, we decided to, instead of trying to be able to score on them, playing defense on them, because as of right now, we predicted that most teams would not be uh, scoring on the wall stake uh, super fast because most of the robots here are slightly underdeveloped this early in the season because not many people have had much experience so far. So with us not going for the wall stake, we are able to play defense on them. And then since we are going for a very fast and controlling match strategy, we just keep scoring on these mobile goals and just racking up points that way. And it just allows us to get tons of points. So in your first match that we watched, uh, you really kind of controlled that single mobile goal, right? Kind of held that a bit. Do you see that maybe changing throughout the state of tournament that you're going to drop that and go for other goals? Or is that just kind of match dependent? Um, depending on how our teammates are. So sometimes we might have some sort of strategy where uh, our teammates will help protect the goals while we're filling them up just because of how fast we fill them. Uh, and we will just have them try and protect them as well as, especially in the last 10 scoring on other teams. Let's talk a little bit more about your robots. We start to go in, uh, break down your drivetrain for me. So on the drivetrain, we are running 480 RPM on 3.25 inch wheels. Uh, we have two stacked motors back here, both with blue cartridges and then one up here. Uh, so with this drive, uh, 600 felt a little too fast for us. So we slightly lowered it to uh, 480 on 3.25s because it's pretty much as fast with 3.25s uh, as we'll talk about the math later. But with that, uh, we only just went with two wheels on each side instead of what normally people would do with three. Uh, that is because with how light we made our robot, it won't sink in too much. And so we're able to go down to four and save weight. Let's talk about that math a little bit uh, there, Jacob. Let's pass it over and, and talk to me more about what's gone to that. And one other thing uh, too that I noticed, uh, you guys are doing this reach arm thing as well, which uh, I really love, really love to see that. Uh, so break down both those areas for me. Uh, yeah, so at the start, I basically just had some time with an Excel spreadsheet and like put in like a ton of different drive trains and did like wheel force with wheel diameter. And we found that pretty much uh, people think about speed, like 600 RPM sounds fast, but this is really close because it has bigger wheels. Sure. And it also is a lot faster over shorter distances because it has a little more acceleration. We found that at shorter distances, there's a bit of a curve where the fastest drives don't reach their top speed in time. And since we're darting from like remote ring to ring, picking up different rings, uh, it just allows us to, to do that a lot quicker than if we just sure could cross the field super fast, we wouldn't be fast in other areas. Uh, and then with the reach arm, so we have this arm that can drop down like this and it allows us to do pretty much, it's got a lot of features. Uh, we use it in the, Auton to grab the center goal quickly. We reach out, grab it, and like pull it back. Uh, so that's one use of it, but we also can use it to knock over enemy mobile goals, like full rings. We can use it to knock like ring stacks over. Uh, we can also use it to just, uh, yeah, we use it for those things. You know, one of the things I'll tell you from uh, other Robox competition I've seen, that center goal, I think it's gonna become just so critical as we start to see this game evolve even more. So I think we're gonna see that race for that center goal really amp up more and more for that. So I'd love to see that you've gone that strap plus the uh, utility that's able to do several other things too is really great. 
uh, for that too. Uh, Noah, let's talk about some of the other aspects. I saw you running a uh, level one hang. You got that successful in your first match, so congrats on that. Uh, and then let's run through this uh, intake. I think uh, an interesting thing with the uh, drive train speed is that your, your intake is actually faster than what your drive train is in terms of at least RPM. Um, so the reason we went for a really fast intake is because since our robot doesn't have a wall stake mech, we need to focus a lot on mobile goals so we can pick up rings really easily um, with like this. We curve the polycarb on the front of our ramp so it can pick them up very well. And um, if, yeah, if we pick up the mobile goal, it scores them uh, like really fast. So you can see um, we designed the robot to score mo uh, on mobile goals like really fast because most of our strategy is focused on the mobile goals not on like wall stakes. So we need to be able to score on mobile goals faster than other people with a wall stake mech. So we can go play defense on them so that they can't score on wall stakes. Yeah, you guys, I mean, when I watched your match, I mean, you were like, 15 seconds ahead of like anybody else on the field of filling up that first mobile goal. So definitely paying good dividends uh, for your team as well. Uh, talking about uh, on your level one uh, hang, where was that in terms of consideration of importance to have it? Cause you're getting, you know, three points off of that. Uh, so is that something that like was a critical thing for you guys coming here to the uh, Minnesota Signature event? And then where do you see that maybe going in future events? Um, so we didn't originally think it was really that important. We kind of didn't plan on doing one, but later we realized that if we do, have one we can get a, high, a much higher skill score so we added this really quickly and just works um, right here there's a piston on like a little pin and when that pin pulls out it lifts up and then it just passively drives onto the bar and lifts up the robot like that um, and it's we designed it to just be very fast and consistent um, because usually at the end of the match because of our strategy we're gonna have a mobile goal in the doubled corner and then at like 10 seconds, we're gonna let go and then drive and hang. So we wanna have that really fast and we plan on improving it, maybe having like level two climb by grabbing the bar in between level one and two and then lifting our robot up to there. But this was just made really fast. So it's just a level one. When we were talking earlier uh, before this, you guys mentioned you have uh, probably the lightest robot here as well too. Uh, where, what kind of advantage is that giving you? Is that just in terms of the climb or do you see other advantageous areas as um, well? It makes our climb better because it, our climb doesn't need to be very strong to lift the robot, but also we accelerate a lot faster on short distances and long distances and all over the robot. Um, I don't actually know where, like over here you can see there's these special nylocks we bought, which are made of aluminum. So they weigh, I think, around one seventh the weight of a normal nylock. Sure. And last year we used thin nylocks, which weigh like half the weight. But this means that we can use a ton of nylocks on a robot and it's still really light. We also, anywhere where the screw wasn't like load bearing, like on all these bearings, it's a screw made of nylon. So they weigh basically nothing. And it means our robot can accelerate really fast, even though it has a really fast drive. Well, 7701X, uh, congratulations on an awesome robot so far. And of course, your first match win already out of the gate as we're filming this. So we wish you best of luck here at the uh, Minnesota Signature event. Thanks for telling us more about your team and good luck the rest of the season as well. Thanks a lot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.